What is going on, everybody? Happy Monday, Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haber, the big winner. Sheets, every time it's, I mean, you said you we were talking about it just a minute ago, and you, every weekend it feels like, uh, it feels like every, every odd weekend, every time I'm not even thinking there's something happening, I get a message from you, and I'm like, oh my God, look at what just happened. So Sheets had a big win, and uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that and take us through uh, the process? Sure. Well, first of all, let's let's uh, let's call it what it is. I mean, a lot of the um, a lot of the, uh, the not a lot of the top players, but a good amount of the top players either take the weekend off or don't put the same amount of effort into the weekend, which makes which makes it a little softer, you know. So so it gives me a little better opportunity to uh, to get that done, you know, which uh, always is uh, it's always a good thing, and I always play the weekend, so that so I have that. And, um, and yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I'll just share my screen up here. I think the whole key, it doesn't have the, uh, unfortunately it doesn't have the ownerships anymore. Um, mm. the, the, the recent lineups or whatever, I don't think, I mean, maybe actually it will actually, if I pull it up here, I think it should, but, um, it should, right. Yeah. Oh, it does. And, and what, 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 what was helpful is that, um, I think McClanahan was on this slate. Um, mm -hmm. and he didn't do it and he, and he, you know, he got crushed, I think. So, I think he took a lot of the ownership. So where I played the cease Nola combination, I thought it was going to be like the mega chalk, but when I saw Nola at 37%, I actually thought that was a little low. And I didn't realize that was because uh, McClanahan was on the slate too, I think. But, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was between three teams. I had Philly, St. Louis, and Washington. I ended up going with Philly. And, uh, and then uh, the the key, as usual, in my in my big wins is is taking is, is taking the zero somewhere. So so Trey, <laughs> Trey Mancini was the zero uh, in this particular occasion, um, and uh, the Phillies all just kind of just you know I ran I ran hot with the solo homers, which is nice, um, and then I, I held off all kinds of nonsense. You know I I was I was, <laughs> I was clear like I I had basically coached like dead, you know after like the Phillies were done. Um, and then all of a sudden you get like Kansas city has a, Salvador Perez puts a homer up there. And now it's like eight to six or something. And I had to hold off this dude in the, in the, in the ninth inning when the Yankees were coming up, I needed the first guy, like Dylan May, who was on base and, 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 uh, what's his name? Judge and Rizzo were coming up. If either one of them hits a double in an RBI, I lose. So I had to fight both them off and they had both already hit like home runs or something like that. So it was, a uh, it was a cool sweat, and the, what's weird is about it is I can't even watch the Yankee games um, because my cable system is ridiculous. So I had to have my <laughs> my son was basically narrating it to me on the phone. Um, <laughs> so and yeah, and so we uh, we held it off, and, uh, and uh, there and there you have it. This is this is the first time I've ever won this thing. Um, the 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 big uh, seven 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 or whatever. Really? Yep, never won this one before. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is this is tough, you know. Um, yeah. So uh, and I mean, there's I, one I, entry you did it with, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not putting more than one in this. Thing. No, yeah. I know, I know. I just yeah. I thought it was worth pointing out. You see that you know DFS. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I like seeing the coach S eleven with the parentheses three because that means yeah. you probably have more than three. Oh, you know? yeah. He he max entered. I bet you. It looks like look at look at the fantasy the fantasy bros. That's right. Uh, he had the eleven. That's right. That's right. That's a these are max entry. These these are tough to win, and it's great to yep. it, like you said. I think that it's great to get it done on the weekend. But um, yep. it is great. Like I mean, like that's I'm actually shocked. I didn't look at him too much yesterday. But I didn't realize Philly. Like I mean, that ownership is is shocking. Actually, like that was I mean, pretty low. really, really, really low. So, congrats, man. That's really yeah, low. yeah. Let's uh, let's see if we can't uh, keep it uh, keep it a rolling. Yeah, that would be sweet. I look at that that balance up there in the account. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Right. Now I got to withdraw. I want I wanted to flex it just for like a day. Or <laughs> that's All awesome, right. though, man. No, I'm seriously happy for you. I don't want people to think I lost like hundred thousand when the balance shows up there tomorrow or something like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. I used right. to. I know you know me. I always take it out uh, right away, but Absolutely. I'm always afraid people think that same thing. Yeah. All right, so let's let you want to get into it. Yeah. Oh, look at this. We have revenge already right off the bat. Look at this. Scherzer in Washington. Ouch. Wow. Sick. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's a, uh, I mean, like the, the thing that's shocking to me is that there, there's a six and a half K prop for Scherzer today. What, what about, what about the last three innings? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what happens after the third? You're right. um, I I'm, I'm all over. I mean, like this is, I, I will play a ton of Scherzer today. I know that Washington has the bats that don't, you know, don't strike out as much as you'd want. And then the weird thing is in the early projections I'm looking at, why aren't more people playing the Mets? I think that yeah, I don't get, I don't get that at all. I feel like that they've got to be the end up being chalky. And if they're not, 
I think we should probably be in the Mets business. Um, I think the Mets are a great stack. I, I don't buy the early ownership that I'm that I'm seeing right now, but I I do uh, I do think that they're going to be much more popular. I think they're one of the best stacks in the slate. And I mean, I, I mean, seriously, I know they're expensive, but like, am I totally missing something? Like, what's going on where they would be this low? And I guess it's because the the pricing. I guess that's pretty much it. I guess. Yeah. I have, um, I have Scherzer as well. I mean, obviously the best spend up there is, it really isn't a spend up today. Um, that I, that I see. Um, so he's, he's the best raw points guy, but you know, he's, 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 um, I think the most popular is going to, well, we'll get to them later, but, but, uh, I, I think that, I think that you should probably consider playing Scherzer. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. overall pitching wise, I do have like, bunch of guys kind of close um but i like scherzer i like pairing him with the mets um and and i had the first exact same thoughts as you did like i looked at my first my first rankings and i'm like okay i have the mets like one of the top two stacks and i'm seeing them like sixth or seventh highest owned. i can't i can't imagine that being the case so um we'll just have to we'll just we'll just have we'll get we'll get ownership updates as we get closer yeah, yeah, I just I just can't imagine that that ends up staying staying the case, especially with with the way that Corbin has struggled. Um, uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. All right, uh, let's uh, let's jump over to your to your Yankees here and uh, and Seattle. I think that you've got two options here. I think that you've got Herman as a as a legitimate option at sixty four hundred. It's just like it's just too cheap. He's got a five and a half K prop. I mean, just to think about it, like. He has a one. He has a K prop one lower than 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 uh, Scherzer. I always like to look at this stuff because it's for sixty four hundred. I mean, it's a it's pretty that's pretty unusual that you see it for you know that high of a K prop. And uh, I think it's I think that it's a it's a it's a reasonable play. And I think that the Yankees are a. I don't want to stack entirely in general against Gonzalez always, but he's definitely given me more reason to want to this year. And I think the Yankees are going to be fairly uh, fairly owned as well tonight. I think they're totally reasonable. The pricing makes sense. Uh, Donaldson's reasonably priced, thirty nine hundred, and really cheap on Fanduel as well. Um, you can mix in a Hicks or Trevino. I think the Yankees are a legitimate stack. So I have both the Mets and Yankees. This could be a New York night for me because I, I like both of them a lot. Yeah, I have Yankees and Mets kind of tied for just the top overall. You know, no no ownership consideration, no value consideration. Just like who's going to score the most. Mm-hmm. Have the two of them tied. Um, and as far as pitching goes, yeah, I think I think Herman is certainly um, is certainly one of a bunch of a bunch of guys that are in play, and he's the only guy that's that's that low. Um, mm-hmm. There's one guy that's pretty close. We'll talk about him later, but um, I definitely think Herman's in play. And especially, look, if you're gonna if you want to you're gonna want to pay up for Yankees, for example, um, you get you know good correlation there. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much agree. Herman in play, Yankees one of the clear top options. Yeah. And, and I mean, the one thing about, you know, Marco Gonzalez, I mean, he'll, <laughs> he'll give up stolen bases and home runs. And I don't know how we just ignore that. I mean, you know, you see judge it projected at 20%, which means in the high buy-ins that's automatically 40%. <laughs> um, just something to keep in mind because judges, I mean, it's pretty insane the year that he's having. I don't think anybody since Mickey Mantle ever had this big of a home run lead in August. Um, that that's interesting. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think he's the only one ever that has has. He's think he's what has he got like eleven more than anybody else. I think it is right now. More than Bonds ever did. I mean, no, it was. I, that was that was the that was the thing I read. I, I don't know. I just read that that little note. So for some reason, somebody somebody the year Bonds at seventy three must have been closer. I don't know. Right. Right. Um. All right. Let's talk about uh, Arizona and Cleveland. This is the one game with a little bit of weather concern on the slate. Um, well, I was going to ask you about that. Okay. Yeah, we'll see where that goes later. I don't. I don't know how to speak to it now because right now it looks sort of like just just in between, probably more of a delay warning than anything else. And I'm not interested in the pitching here. Um, I think Cleveland is reasonable. I, I don't. I, I feel like this is a, a the the normal thing that happens with Zach Davies pitches that everybody loads up on the the other side and. It just, you know, maybe doesn't get blown up quite as much as people might think. And, but yeah, the left, he struggles with lefties. Um, he used to be reverse splits guy, but uh, he struggled with lefties lately. I think Cleveland's reasonable. I just prefer, I prefer the Mets and, and Yankees personally. Um, that's pretty much where I'm at for this game. I don't have any interest in the pitching. Yeah, I got three sort of value-ish type stacks. Um, actually, like three and a half. 
Um, and Cleveland is one of them. But like you said, I mean, I, I think that, you know, they're, they're probably going to get owned, right? I would imagine. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, so you got to keep an eye on that. And uh, I agree. I don't have any Quantro or Davies in my, my stuff either. So for me, it's going to be either Cleveland um, or nothing in this game. Yeah, you do have a lot. And like you said, you, you do have a lot of uh, a cheap out. I mean, Varsho at only at 3,600 is, is stands out. Uh, Fran Mel Reyes on the other side at 2,700 stands out as a, just a really cheap price for potential for power upside. So I, those, those two guys especially stand out. So I, I could see getting to them. I just, they're not my priority right off the bat. All right. Let's talk about uh, Detroit and Minnesota because I, I this is a, I'm trying to figure out why the total is where it is in this game. And I, I can't for the life of me seem to figure it out. My instinct is would just be like, okay, just bet the over on this game. It's seven and a half total, or no, it's a seven total. Wow. Um, I don't know why. I, I, I'm all. I, I love Scooble here. Um, I also think you could make an argument for a sneaky twin stack, but I really like Scooble, um, and I think that like Detroit is you know as bad as their offense is to have a three point three run total against Aaron Sanchez in. 2022 just seems a little bit crazy. I didn't even know that was possible. I don't get how we, I, don't, I don't get this at all. There's, I mean, There's, something's wrong with it, right? Like it doesn't it just doesn't make any sense. It's also 82 degrees with winds blowing out. Like I don't, I don't know why the total would be like this. I would have guessed two runs higher. I genuinely would have thought that. So, I, I I'm, I'm very high on Scooble today. Um, and I'm gonna have to figure out where he fits in with the Clevenger, Scherzer, Herman thing. But he is a guy who I think at low ownership is a tremendous play. You do have a lot of guys who hit lefties well on Minnesota, but uh, Scooble when he's on, I mean, he's streaky a little bit, but he's a perfect G- like GPP type of tournament pitcher. Like he's going to put up 30s and he's going to put up negatives. And I think that this is a spot where he could put up a 30 and I really, really like him here. So that's that's my main takeaway from this game. This there's, so there's, so there's something going on because I'm pulling up the DraftKings Sportsbook Mm-hmm. there's not even a line something's weird about this so maybe maybe the pitching is is still in question yeah there's um, not even a line in this game um, i don't even know who minnesota could throw out there other than i mean even joe ryan like i, I just don't see a total that that makes any sense for this that's, that's just what i'm looking at in, on the regular uh regular you know uh sports book app or whatever but yeah anyway it's i i do really like scooble either way um and I think that he's, you know, again, if you if you wanted to get creative and and potentially play a stack that's lower owned, uh, I do think that you know, garlic is cheap, and you've got Sanchez, Buxton, and Correa. You could throw Polanco in there. There's a bunch of guys. I mean, the, you even have Tim Beckham at at two K if you wanted to make a full stack. I could see. I, I like Scooble, but like I said, there's a wide range of outcomes, so I like both. I like both sides of this. Detroit's another uh, uh, value value uh team for me uh they're not as good as some of the others maybe but they're they certainly certainly in there in the mix as they usually are because everybody on the team is like 1800 <laughs> it's like um but uh i have scooble i have sort of a similar sentiment to you i mean i have him on my list kind of near the bottom of the list but still on the list and i have him at about only about 10 percent ownership or so um so i'll, I'll definitely consider him yeah, yeah, I, I think that he's a, I think he's a, he's going to be the the low owned one with the tremendous upside that that I think I'm I'm probably going to bite on. All right, uh, Baltimore, Texas. Um, I don't have a lot of interest in. I, I think John Gray is going to get some love, and I I tough, like John Gray. A tough, a tough price, right? Fine. It's ninety seven hundred though. We were we were playing him at lower ownership at seventy four hundred, like. Feels a little, I don't know, a little thin. Um, if you want to argue for Texas, okay. Um, I understand that people will play some of them. You do have ridiculously cheap options and guys like Cole, Cole Calhoun, who's 2,100. Um, there's a lot of really, really cheap bats in this spot, but this is a pretty terrible lineup without Seager in there. And I'm just sort of off this game in general. Yeah, I... Um... Uh, I actually have Texas as one of the value plays, as you might have mentioned, as, as you've mentioned, whenever, whenever you got like a whole bunch of guys at 2,500 or less, I mean, they're going to yeah. show up, right? Yeah, sure. So, so, so I think they're okay. Um, uh, 
I have John Gray as, you know, uh, I have him as a play. You know, I don't have him as one of my top three or even my top four, but but he's close. Um, but I, I think he's getting owned a little bit. You know what I mean? If not a lot of it. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm sort of separate. He's got a six and a half K prop too. I mean, this is, they're like this John Gray, they're re- I actually like John Gray as a pitcher. I've always thought he was a little bit underrated, but this is, this is a lot of respect. And he's been, in, 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 to, to his defense, he's been really, really good lately. Um, I don't know though. Something about it feels funny. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's been, I mean, he's been over other than one game. I think he's been over six K's and seven out of eight starts. And uh, I just personally, I, I like the other pitchers better. Per- <laughs> That's just where right. I'm at. And uh, he's yep. expensive, but I, I'm just probably going to, going to fade him, especially if he has any ownership at all. And I'm not that interested in Texas, even though I definitely understand the argument for the, for the value bats for sure. So I imagine this is going to be the chalk, um, or at least close to it. Is 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 Kopech. Actually, no, nah, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, there are, there are other guys that are better. I, I was I was getting confused, but I I, I think Kopech's a really good play here uh, at seven k. Um, I have him rated a little bit below the top. The, the two guys we're going to get to later, but I think he's I think he's completely reasonable. I mean, he's got talent. He's had some bad games. Had some good games. And uh, I think it's 7K. I think he's he's too cheap. So I like that. And yet, on the other hand, KC is really cheap. Um, and they kind of exploded a little bit yesterday against the Yankees. Uh, Salvador Perez, I didn't even know he was back. He hit a freaking, he hit a monster home run in the freaking ninth um, to take the lead there. That was a big home run. Um, and uh, so I like uh, I like KC a little bit. And uh, on the other hand, though, I do like Kopech. Yeah, I, I think that... Um... Look, Kopech is interesting at, you know, the price, obviously, and I think he's going to get some ownership because of it. I think I'm going to side with Herman, who's going to be lower owned. Um, Kopech, one thing about him is that he really, the strikeouts really haven't come with him. And, and we sort of thought that would happen with him, that he would ha- he'd be a big strikeout guy. It's not been going on. This is a much better uh, lineup just when you throw Perez in there than it, than it was. Um, I mean, without Ben attendee for a minute there, they looked really bad, but I mean, just, just throwing Perez in there alone. Right. I, I think it's, I think it's, I think that that's a really interesting low owned stack. Pa- pa- pause this for just a sec. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Hello. All right. We're back. So I just, yeah, just, just saying that, that I, that I definitely think that if KC is really, really low owned here, which I think they're going to be and at their prices, I think that's a pretty interesting stack, uh, to go counter to the the Copa well, well if they're low owned i mean that's probably going to be my best play on the board i mean that's 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 that would be awesome i think they are going to be low and they're so yeah. cheap i mean they're like you could you could combo stack them with anybody i mean pascantino is 2.2 if you wanted to play a full stack you've got prado and isbel and they're both minimum cost hunter dozier is only 2.8 um it's just a lot of really cheap bats to go with the bobby witt Whit merrifield and salvador perez you right. could pick two of them, or you could pick three of them and play with two of those guys. I think it's a, I think it's a really interesting stack, and I'm just going to double check the weather here because that's always matters in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, you've got 83 degree weather with 10 mile hour winds blowing out. I, I definitely could see getting on the Royals train here, even though I'm a I'm a Kopech believer for the long term. Um, I don't think that this is a spot where I I, I would uh, I would want to fade these uh, these Royals bats in multi entry tournaments, and I have very little interest in the white Sox who have a big run total today. I just can't quite play them. I mean, they've been so bad against righties this year. It's really, really hard for me to play. I might change my mind about on this later today. Cause I do like, like historically, if you take all the data, these guys have a lot of, there's a lot of really good bats in this lineup. They just haven't been good. Um, Simple as that for a whole season. And uh, I will I will fade them as I thought they were going to be chalkier. So now I'm looking at their ownerships and maybe maybe I end up playing a little bit of them if they stay this low owned. But I don't know. I, I can't get too excited about the White Sox these days personally, um, although they've been a little bit better lately. But I, I just don't think I'm going to do it. How about you with the White Sox? Not for me. All right. Moving Boston. on. Um, Boston. So, I have, so I have an opinion on this next game. Go ahead. Let's let's hear it. Well, I mean, the- broken. Well, I mean, he pitched on June the 8th, and then he went into rehab. He got hurt, whatever it is. Came back. He got the benefit of the All-Star break to make him to make him a little more rest. 
and he hasn't gotten a guy out since, you know, um, and he's in Houston, which is not, it's not a good place to be. If you're not, if you're, if you're broken, you know what I mean? It's just not. And I think Houston could have just going to bury him this game. You know what I mean? Until further notice. Okay. I can't imagine that not happening. Um, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's where I'm at. I think Houston's a very legit pivot off of all this other stuff. I um, like that a lot sheets. So that's, that's, that's my opinion. And, and, and for good measure, uh, we'll get, we'll get, we'll give Luis Garcia the free four points along with a decent projection. Um, and look, he's not always the strikeout guy, whatever. But um, I like that. So for me, it's it's Garcia Houston, and that's a, that's a, I think that's a good good place to start. Yeah, keep an eye out. I think you might see some of these players from Boston traded before the day is done. Um, even, even more for Luis Garcia. Yeah, no, I mean if, if JD Martinez is gone and 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 uh, they're not going to trade Bogarts, but if JD's gone and and Verdugo is gone, I mean it, it suddenly becomes a like a, a really scary bad lineup. Yep. So uh, I can definitely get behind the Garcia idea. I just, uh, I want to see how the lineup shakes out. We, remember, we're right before the trade deadline. We've got one more day. So. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay. Yeah. There's going to be some moves made and there's going to be some weird lineups out there. So we're going to probably pounce on it, but don't over pounce. Everybody's going to pounce on, on what they think okay. is the weakest thing. And we just have to try and make sure we don't, we're not playing like 50% Luis Garcia. I don't think. That's okay. Fair fair enough. Enough. Um. Because part of the reason why I don't I don't believe that and it, and it might maybe it will be hard for him to get there is you've got Clevenger against Colorado on the road in San Diego, one of the biggest stadium downgrades of anybody. Clevenger, even when he's not like his one really you know lousy start recently was get was in Colorado. Uh, you get this game at home. He's been good, and eighty three hundred seems complete, perfectly reasonable to me. Uh, Clevenger Scoobal is very likely the way that I'm going to go on DK where, and I'll probably just put all my Scherzer equity into FanDuel. Um, but I, I, I do like Clevenger quite a bit. And uh, if I'm not playing, you know, the, the Herman Kopech Garcia guys, even if you play, you can play Garcia with them too. I just think Clevenger is a really good option today. And I have no interest in what I think might be a fairly owned San Diego lineup. I, I don't think it's going to be crazy. But I think you're going to see guy, you know, multiple guys double digit owned. They're they're certainly priced right. You could play Nomar Mazzara twenty three hundred, Hosmer is twenty six hundred. But this lineup has, it's weird. They win games, but they don't they don't seem to ever hit. And I don't know. I, I personally don't want to. Sensatella is just like we always talk about. It. Even in Colorado, I always just fade the games he's pitching because he just he just limits damage just enough. He doesn't quite get hit quite hard enough to to where you're going to win the slate against him. And he always goes his five or six innings and, you know, gives up a home run, but that's not enough to win a slate. So I am not very high on San Diego. How about you? Yeah, I, I'm getting um, early ownership of Clevenger at 40%. Um, and and that might I, be I, much. it sounds like a little much. Um, if that is the case, I, I just assume not play him. Um, and again, if we, as we've, um, as we've talked about, I always just kind of don't want to play him. Uh, I don't know exactly why. Um, it just doesn't, he's just, and every time I say this, I, I feel stupid saying it, but it just doesn't, I don't think he's been the same in like two years, you know, and, but, and, and then every once in a while I'll see like a good game and then I'll see a bunch of bad ones, you know, and then a good game, then a bunch of crappy ones then a couple of good games and then whatever. And if he's going to end up, if he ends up being the huge jock, I just, I don't know. I uh, just, the problem is on this slate, pitching really is kind of crappy. You know what I mean? I, well, maybe not crappy. I shouldn't say. I mean, you play Scherzer and you can play, you know, if you end up playing Garcia against the minor league lineup. I mean, like, uh, I, I think that's totally reasonable. Yeah. But, but maybe, maybe, like you said, something like Herman makes a little more sense. I, I just, I don't know. I'll, I'll look when I, when I do my, my MME stuff with Saber Sam, I'm sure I'll get to like a bunch of Clevenger. I'll probably play him, but. I'm probably going to uh, to try to do something else in in the uh, in the hand built stuff, and I, I have no reason to do this. I mean, he does rate to be the top value for me. Um, I don't know. I, I I'm just I'm just not too thrilled about it. Um, and San Diego, the San Diego side, I didn't even get to it all. So uh, I'm with you. I'm with you on that part of it. Yeah, makes sense. Um, okay. So we have a Dodger game and here's, you know, for all you guys out there that call me a homer and everything, I will say that I have zero interest in the Dodgers tonight. 
Um, Logan Webb is, and maybe it's just the eye test because I've watched him pitch against the Dodgers a few times. Um, he is really, really good against this lineup. And I personally don't have any interest in this game in general right now. Like, again, I, I reserve the right to change my change my mind a little bit. They are going to be really low owned, which is always appealing uh, for the Dodgers. Like the, you, you're used to getting 40%. Now you're going to get 3% on all these guys. So I, I'm op- I get it. You know, you got the, the young kid Outman who has his, de- his debut yesterday. He had a home run his first at bat. He was three for four in, in Colorado. Um, if he's back in the lineup, he's minimum cost. And you, it would be easy to stack this team. They're very, they're, they're, they're affordable enough with Outman and Lamb just, and Bell, you, you just play Outman, Lamb and Bellinger. And all of a sudden they're really affordable. I don't want to mess with Logan Webb here. And I don't want to mess with Andrew Heaney and a second start after coming back. So I am pretty much completely off this game. How about you? Yeah. Um, what I would say is that um, Andrew Heaney could prove to be a big part of the, of the Dodgers going into the playoffs. Um mm-hmm. He's uh, you know, if he get if he has uh, if he's now healthy and just kind of, you know, slowly making his way back, and if he has his control issues, which he's always had, sort of like under mm-hmm. control. I mean, he's a he'll be. I mean, he'll, it, it look if the Dodgers end up like winning the World Series, I think he'll he's gonna be a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and with for, for for that reason, sort of like there's just literally no reason for them to roll him out for his second start with like a hundred pitches. You know what I mean? Like there's just no reason to it. Right. So um, I'm, I'm going to be off of that as well. And um, yeah, good, good baseball game, two good teams, no interest fantasy wise for me on either side. Yeah. I think I just, for what it's worth, he's only pitched, I think five, what four or five games this season. I think Keeney has given up like one run this season, but well, <laughs> like he's got, he's got, he's got the ERA of 0.47. I mean, yeah. So maybe he, <laughs> maybe he gave up two, I guess, but he is, um, He's super talented. I this this is uh the Giants lineup is again they're they're pesky enough and they do the the switching thing and you know you've got the, the so they get all their righties in there and I, I'm I'm personally not very not very high on 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 anything in this game and and I'd like to be because this is the you know this is the game where every all my family will be watching tonight and and you want to have some interest in, and I don't know we we love the Dodgers Giants rivalry and. I, I just can't find anything to do here. I don't want to mess with Logan Webb. Although what I might do just to, to make myself sane is like get a full five man Dodger stack in one lottery tournament. And just, for, just, just in case, just, just in, in case. case. I mean, it is weird to see that, you know, one of the best offense, anytime the best offenses in baseball are just completely unowned. I, I just think you always should, should have like, should peak a little bit of interest where if I'm playing 20 lineups, I can throw one aside because you're going to hit that occasionally. You're going to hit that enough. You know, one out of 20 times are the Dodgers, t- the top scoring team on this slate. Sure. Um, and it's a little bit warm. It's over 60 degrees in San Francisco. For those of you San Francisco oh. lovers, I, mean, I don't understand who you are, but like it's a great city that that for some reason is always, I, I, I just don't understand why people want to live in California and, and deal with, you know, weathers in the in the 40s, 50s and 60s in the summer. So um, so I want to go back to uh, Scherzer for just a second. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember a couple of ga- a couple of days ago there was somebody who was targeted against Washington as a pitcher, and, and someone said that um, Washington's kind of a tough matchup. They don't really strike out that much. Is that is that actually the case? Does it matter against Scherzer? Um, I, I think it, so. It is that? actually the case that they strike out less than you'd want, depending on how. Again, everybody's up for sale right now, so like Juan Soto may be on a different team by the end of today. Okay. Um, so if that happens, then Scherzer is, if Juan Soto is gone and, and then anybody else, but even just Soto alone, this, this is a, they don't have a lot of good bats, but they do have a lot of guys who don't strike out a ton, but you've got strike out guys like Nelson Cruz, Ruiz, Franco, those guys will strike out the rest of the, the guys just put the ball in play. Um, I'm, I, I think Scherzer is clearly like, if you had to, like, that's why I keep saying on one pitcher sites, I think he makes the most sense. If I need to save some and and pay up for my Mets, um, I think maybe maybe playing the 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 eight K or the you know the sixty four hundred Herman or the seven K Kopech, that's where that starts to make a little more sense to me because I like the Yankees and Mets and they're both the bats I want are expensive, um, so you're gonna have to pay up a little bit. There are is other value you can mix in, but it's not value that I'm overly thrilled with um, outside of you know Cole Calhoun, Victor Reyes. J.D. Davis, Eric Hosmer. I, I would rather not have to play these guys as one-offs. Although it worked out well for you. Look, 
even with the zero from uh, from Mancini yesterday, you get the cheap that cheap pl- play out of the way. It does yeah. open things up, and you can play your lineups like the way you want. So yeah. I like that five two one sort of uh, sort of strategy. Um, but I still think that I'm probably going to be playing more Scherzer on FanDuel than I am on DK. The reality is the way I ended up with, with, with Mancini was that the guy I originally had in my lineup at first base was scratched. And then I went through it. So who can I just jam in there at the same price and end up being Mancini? Then mm-hmm. get zero. <laughs> I tell you? No, it makes, it makes perfect sense. I mean, he was 15% owned because of his price. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, cheats. Well, again, congratulations. That was a great job. We're lo- we'd love to see it guys. If you haven't checked it out, of course, like, and subscribe and definitely join our discord. If anybody that needs the link, I will, po- I will post it on this with this video. Um, and yeah, we'd love to have you aboard. We've been, uh, doing, doing pretty well. I almost, I, you know, I, I sheets, I'm just going to vent about one quick thing. Cause I had the, you uh, vent all you want. I, got I had the two fifty where I finished fourth in the two fifty on, on Friday. And all oh, I that's got, what that was, I, I didn't know what it was in, what it was in. I saw you tweet yeah, something. It was. And then I finished third the night before and everybody's firing at me. Well, you would have won the 888 if you played this lineup in the 888. That's such a roadie. Road, road I can't take it. I can't take it. It's my <laughs> biggest, like, it's my new biggest pet peeve. It's like, oh, you would have won this if you played this. Now, if 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 I leave a, a lineup that would have won a million dollar golf tournament, the, the 25 out, but I have it in a $200 single entry, yeah, that's come problem. at me. That, that's that's yeah. on me. But if I if it's if it's an 888 versus a 250, that means that it's my less preferred lineup. I'm going to go with the ones I prefer the most in the higher buy-ins. And Great. It would have won the 888. I'm not playing a hundred. I'm not max entering the 888. I'm not playing 30 entries in that. So right. it's just, you know, I'm not, I'm, I, I wasn't going to wait, 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 is that, is that what people can play? Can you play I think it's 16 in the, in the 888. How many? I think it's 16. I'm not hundred percent sure. Right. 16. So, and, and you've got, you know, a bunch of other guys doing it. So it, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, we're going to look, that's what's so impressive. You just won it with one entry. And that's yeah. just tells you guys, like, this is what we're, we're talking about. I, I say what we're selling, but like, we are not max entering everything. We're not putting up a hundred thousand dollars a day and we're still capable of and, and yeah. consistently winning these, these tournaments. So it really can be done. And hopefully you guys will be a part of it anyway. Um, sheets, anything else before I get out of here? Uh, no, good. If you could just, uh, just hang on for a second. If you stop recording though. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Good luck to everybody tonight. And, uh, hopefully one of you guys will see you guys at the top of the leaderboards posted in discord and we'll, uh, we'll see you guys in there. All right.